Nintendo Wii nunchucks are the best input device available for your electronics projects. And if you disagree, I'll fight you. Look, obviously the best is very subjective and it won't suit all projects, but the functionality you get for how simple it is to hook up or to integrate into your project is fantastic, especially if you're short on GPIOs. I'm a lazy person when it comes to doing projects and I feel like the nunchuck is a bit of a cheat code. If you're still not sure what you could use it for, I'll show some example projects I've built using a nunchuck later in the video. As for features, one nunchuck gets you an analog stick, two digital buttons, and an accelerometer. The best part is that the Wii controller uses the I2C protocol for talking to the nunchuck, and as luck would have it, this is a very common protocol used by Arduinos or Raspberry Pis for communicating with sensors or displays, so we can very easily swap the Wii controller out of this equation. I2C uses only two data wires, and you can even communicate with multiple devices using the same two wires, as the peripherals have addresses baked into them. As for the cost and availability of nunchucks, I'm going to make some assumptions. If you are here, you're probably a maker. And if you were a maker, you're almost certainly a hoarder like me, and for once, your inability to throw something away that might be potentially useful down the line is about to pay off, as there's a good chance you have an old Wii floating about somewhere. Even if you don't, nunchucks are really inexpensive to pick up. There are tons of them available at secondhand shops. Even if you've no luck with that, you can buy third-party ones new for pretty cheap too. The third-party ones probably won't be as good, but I've tried a few of them and they work fine. Okay. You've jumped on board the nunchucks are great party bus, gotten the nunchuck, and you want to hook it up to your project. But what do you do with this thing? You could disassemble the connector, cut the cables, and then connect them to your project, paying very close attention to the color of the wires as they are often inconsistent, but I really don't see any reason to use this method. It's destructive, error-prone, and there are easier ways. The easiest way to connect the nunchuck is using an adapter. There are a good few options for this, ranging from really simple ones from AliExpress to more feature-filled ones like the one Adafruit sell. The cheapest one is actually one I made that you can buy yourself directly from Oshpark for $1.20 delivered for three of them. All these adapters are made using PCBs because, as luck would have it, the slot size thickness on the nunchuck is similar to common sizes of PCBs. You're not limited to just adapters either, you could integrate this into bigger PCBs too. I've created some nunchuck shields for some boards to make using them as easy as possible. Normally I would sell these on Tindy, but I'm currently taking a break from Tindy, and I like you guys, so I've shared the design files for these in the description so you can buy them directly from your favorite fab house. And this is a good time to mention that this video is sponsored by... Nobody! I don't care who you buy these from. But if you're watching this, found a nunchuck and you just can't wait to get started, you can just strip some solid core wire and insert it into these slots of the connector. It is possible to use jumper wires, but I find the most common type that I have are just a little bit too big and I think they might damage the controller. But I do have some thinner ones that seem to work great. To connect it up, simply connect power and the I2C pins to your microcontroller. For power, it takes 3.3 volts and you should note that it uses 3.3 volt logic on the I2C pins. Most microcontrollers are 3.3 volts. But if you're using a 5 volt one like an Uno or a Nano, you should use some method for logic shifting. Check out the video here if you need more info on this. I'm not going to go deep into the software side of things, as I think it would be better to show you examples I built instead of going over the code, but here is a 10 second overview. I use the Nintendo Extension Controller Library, which is available on the Library Manager. You basically just begin the nunchuck object, that's hard to say and then do an update before you need to read the values you want. Here are some examples I built using nunchucks as input. The code for all of these can be found in the description. First up is Tetris on one of those RGB LED matrix panels. 
Tetris obviously doesn't need an analog stick, but it works pretty well with one. This code is based on a video from One Lone Coder where he creates a Tetris game using C on a PC and I just adapted it for Arduino. I'm using the I2S matrix library for this example, which is different to the PX matrix library you might have seen me use in the past, but I'll talk more about these displays and libraries in an upcoming video. For the nunchuck part, when I was creating the shields for these matrix panels, I added a pinout for an accelerometer module so that could be used to create these falling sand projects. All I did here was create a PCB with the same pin layout with the nunchuck adapter on it. Next example has the same setup and it's a version of Snake. This is something that I just did for fun over a couple of evenings, just writing it from scratch without following any guides, and it actually turned out pretty good. Using an analog stick for Snake definitely isn't ideal, but it's good enough to test and it's actually quite fun to play with too. Next one is one of my favorite projects I've built using a nunchuck, and it's connecting it up to this cheap gimbal mount thing. I don't have any good use for it, but the reason I like it so much is because my daughter really likes it. What you doing, Zabie? Playing a play Oh yeah? <laughs> and any time I can get her interested in what I do feels like a big win. <laughs> One of the big advantages of the nunchuck is that it's very intuitive. Even a three-year-old can pick it up and figure it out. It also has the advantage of separating the janky electronics prototype away from the end user with its long cable. Next one is just a basic example of multiple nunchucks connected to one microcontroller. I got asked about this one quite a bit, so I decided to add an example for it. The nunchucks do have a fixed I2C address, so it's not possible to use more than one on the same bus, but in this example I have one nunchuck connected to one set of pins of the ESP8266 and the second on a different set of pins. The ESP8266 doesn't actually have any hardware I2C pins, just ones that are used by convention, but we can just swap between which are the active pins like this, and you can read from each controller that way. The last one is one I threw together today because I didn't have a good example of using the accelerometer and it took way too long, but it's an ESP32 emulating a BLE keypad with the accelerometer mapped to the left and right analog sticks. It's not really working right, but you get the idea. If you have any questions on any of this, feel free to ask, but the best place to ask is on my Discord channel. A huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel, I do really appreciate it. And that's all from me, see you next time, bye bye. <laughs> With the button. With the button. Daddy. Yesy. Get the tap to on the robot. Oh, we put that on the robot, will we? Yeah. And don't fall and hold it. Okay. Move the robot.